Hello there and welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to learn about Azure Resource Manager and what it is and their terminology and how best we can use it and all that concepts we're going to learn within this lecture. So let's jump into this lecture by looking into the Azure Resource Manager. The first thing is what exactly this Azure Resource Manager. So this Resource Manager is a deployment and management service for Microsoft Azure. So it can provide you a management layer that will enable you to create, update and delete whatever the resources or the services that you create within Microsoft Azure with your Azure account. So you can use a management features like you can control access or you can lock it. You can go for tagging so that the billing would be easy for you to understand what resources are actually tagged for what billing and you can also secure and you can organize your resources after the deployment also since we have all these advantages with the arm or as your resource manager uh, we can also use as your resource manager templates so when i say template um, in fact we're going to learn these as your resource manager templates or arm templates in the upcoming lecture and the, this lecture is dedicated for as your resource manager but with by using the azure resource manager templates you can create the infrastructure as a code mechanism so you will have a consistency uh, within the uh, azure resource manager uh, because if you look at the uh, the design of this consistency if you see you either you try to create any of the resources from a portal or powershell or cli or even rest based client or sdk whatever you are trying to know communicate it actually goes and communicate with azure resource manager which is the interface and this uh, goes and communicate i mean i mean basically here it happens the authentication and later point it actually hand over to the required resources let's say you're trying to do some configuration on web app so what happens is this request goes to resource manager and resource manager will go and handle this authentication information to web app and similarly if you're trying to communicate or if you're trying to create any of the code or any of the changes you're trying to do either cli or powershell it actually come back to azure resource manager from there it will go and it will uh, work on that specific resources so this is the major advantage that you have a consistency in terms of the management layer so you use any of the tool it doesn't matter if you're coming from a linux background you might be using azure cli and if you're from a windows background you might be using either azure portal or maybe a powershell so you can actually use any of these management tools and it actually go and communicate consistently with the azure resource manager for your authentication that's the major advantages so it's not just the uh, cli or powershell or portal you also have the rest based uh, clients when i say rest based uh, clients for any of the development has happened so you can use the rest based apis also to communicate with any of the applications with the Azure Resource Manager for the authentication purpose. Let's try to understand within this infrastructure or within this design of Azure Resource Manager what all the terminologies that you must have to know. So the first thing is resource. Yes, when you talk about a resource, it's a manageable item that is available within Azure. Let's say a virtual machine or storage account or web application or database or maybe your virtual networks all these are the resources that are the good examples for you so when we talk about the resource groups subscriptions management groups and tags all these are also we can take it as a resource this is not just the uh, web app or virtual machine we can take it as resource groups also subscriptions and management group tags everything we can treat as a resource let's say uh, let's say, let's try to understand what exactly resource group so we have done a couple of demos also throughout this course and that's the first thing what we create a resource group because uh, when you try to create any of the resources like a database or web application or virtual machine we would actually put it into a resource group 
because we wanted a we wanted to follow a life cycle of that application or that specific resources with aligning by aligning to resource group so what exactly resource group resource group is a container that holds a related resources uh, for your as your solution so as your resource group indicates these resources that you want to manage as a group let's say you decide with the resources belonging to a resource group like you created a project for HR team so you created a group called HR team and might be HR team is using HRMS application as a web application and they might be using some virtual machines or some database as a backend all these resources can be part of your resource group let's say uh, on one fine day you want to retire or you want to delete all these resources so what you would be doing is you can simply remove this uh, resource group when I say remove, you can delete this. So when you delete this resource group, all the resources that are aligned within this resource group will be deleted automatically. So it actually follows these resources will follow the life cycle of a resource group. Um, and we would be you know, creating for every demo almost a different resource group later point we would be you not know, deleting that resource group and there are a lot of advantages by having the uh, resource groups or let's say you can uh, you can put all of your project uh, or life cycle of all those resources in the same group and you can deploy you can update you can delete them together let's say you think that these specific servers or xyz servers should follow into a different business unit or different uh, life cycle then you would actually put them into a different resource group so that uh, you know that um, these things belongs to a different resource group and you can manage it and you cannot have a nested resource groups and a resource group is the top layer and inside that resource group you cannot have one more resource group however if you want you can move some of the resources let's say in my resource group I have let's say if this is my resource group and within this resource group I can move my resources to some other resource group but I cannot have one more resource group within this resource group that's the design uh, how we normally do it when you try to create any of the resource group you need to actually give the location or the region where it's gonna actually uh, store this resource group but uh, in fact every resource will also we need to specify a region so in that situation let's say if I put if I choose my resource group as East US but my resources are from maybe West US I can I can create in such a way also but think about a complaints point of view you might be uh, you might be have some kind of a complaints that all of your resources must be in that specific region um, because uh, if you look at the resource group resource group also will store something called a metadata that will actually contains this location information so for complaints reasons you may need to ensure that your data is stored in a particular region so if the resource group region is temporarily unavailable you cannot even update uh, resources in that resource group because the metadata is unavailable so the resources within other regions will still function as expected but you cannot update them so make sure that you know you would be choosing the right resource uh, resources as well as the resource group into a right region and also you can apply tags let's say you know if I give here my demo as the resource name later point when I was trying to create it will ask for me to uh, add the tagging information tagging information will really helps us and also this information tags do not uh, inherit to your resources that are part of your resource group and also if you are, are trying to communicate let's say you have created one a resource group called HRMS and another resource group may be for your employees project one let's say uh, one of the resources you have within these two different resources both can communicate so there is no restriction for the communication the reason for creating resource group is just to you know follow the life cycle of a specific resources in a specific group so that it can be deleted or it can be updated or it can be created uh, with by following that specific resource group life cycle and also I can create any resources not just the resource if the resource groups also as a template 
you see here download a template for automation so when you download this as the template this is called ARM template we're going to walk these ARM templates later point but I'm just trying to you know explain here about the resource group so let's jump into the to the PPT and understand about the resource provider as the next terminology so when we talk about the resource uh, provider let's see when you're trying to deploy some of the resources you may have to frequently need to retrieve some kind of information about your provider for example in this case if you're trying to deploy a data storage you might be you know, trying to communicate with with the storage account so for that there is a provider that's called Microsoft dot storage so you can check out the documentation for every resource you will have some kind of a you know, provider uh, and that provider you can with that provider you can communicate and you can retrieve the information so what happens is when you do hear any of the CLI PowerShell or REST API you will actually communicate with the resource manager for the authentication later point uh, within this ARM you are gonna work with your resources so in this case the resource how do you call is Microsoft dot storage let's say if you are trying to work with key vault service as other servers so you might have to you know call as Microsoft dot key vault so how do I know that you know Microsoft dot key vault so I need you to go to the Microsoft uh, resource providers uh, list and I can check out so that's where it's gonna um, have all the list of resources and the resource provider so these resource provider offers a resource type called uh, in this case if it is a vault we call it as a service vault or key vault services and name of the resource type is uh, will be in a format like resource hyphen provider and then the type of the resource so in this case resource provider is Microsoft so Microsoft dot maybe a storage or it can be a key vault all that so what you can do is you can actually uh, register your resources uh, by re by doing the registration the resources it becomes as a service so what you can do is uh, let's let's actually go back to the portal and uh, let me show you uh, here if I just go to my resources like I need to just go to my subscriptions so let me show you the subscription so I have here the subscription so within this my subscription I have all services uh, which is the subscription and within this I have uh, resource groups so I will have all my resource groups also if I look at all the resource providers if I just click on this so I will have all the resource providers some of them are registered some of them are not registered if you see here if I want to know, work with the virtual machines just nothing but you're creating VM so it, since it is registered I can actually create virtual machines because this specific uh, resource provider is registered let's say you might you know at least within your you know when you're working as as your admin you might get you know sometimes the uh, some errors saying that hey I did not find the specific service provided so I cannot work such kind of you know errors you would be you know getting within as your portal in that situation you just have to come back here for the resource providers and then do that registration and then let's say if you are working with the bot services you see here the bot services or blockchain is not enabled for me actually so I cannot create anything related to the bot services and now what I have to do is I have to register this by simply you know, select that specific service or service resource provider and then say register that's going to enable this specific resources so that we can use uh, on top of it by using this resource provider to create any of the resources so that's how it's going to work as the next step which is a bigger one actually resource manager template or ARM templates we call it so we have a dedicated lecture on ARM template make sure that you can check out that and just to give you an overview when you try to create any of the Azure resources you can actually uh, create I mean it actually in the back end it creates a template um, with a design of uh, a declarative and a customized a kind of a you know, programming kind of thing which is nothing but actually a JSON JavaScript object notation file that gets actually created that will define one or more of your resources which you are trying to deploy uh, to a resource group or maybe a subscription or to a management group or a tenant let's say if you try to deploy here some of the resources so that specific template would actually consist of 
uh, your resource group information subscription and management group information so it's a, a it's a, a kind of you know file that has all the answers so that it uses that's uh, a structure that's a structure called javascript object notation that's nothing but a json file that defines all these resources and resource groups subscription management and tenant all that information and then it you can actually redeploy that as the uh, file let's say if we are trying to create here a, any of the uh, resources let's let's take one of the resource here in this case I have a virtual machine here within my Azure portal and it was created manually and let's say I wanted to duplicate very similar configuration of my all the resource uh, resource group or the size of the virtual machine my subscription my location uh, and the the naming format all that you want it to be in a similar format including the vnet and the public ips specific configuration or maybe nsgs all that to be you know automatically uh, you can you can create basically a template kind of thing so that when you try to deploy this template you will be getting all this specific configuration of your multiple virtual machine so uh, for that you can either create from a scratch this json file which we talked about it uh, which we are going to talk in a upcoming lecture from a scratch and uh, if you are trying to deploy or if you have already deployed this kind of you know, virtual machine you can actually have a look on uh, from the automation so you just have to go to automation and export template and this is where you have uh, the entire template so if i just you know uh, click here uh, toggle this left side and you see here uh, this is the template which is nothing but a json uh, file so I have a schema and the, my resources, all that type, everything is available here. So I can use this template to redeploy the number of times. So I can add this template file to my library. Later point, I can call when I try to create a virtual machine from this library, uh, this specific ARM template, so that I would be getting very similar virtual machine can be created by using this template. So let's jump into other uh, terminology here within this a declarative syntax. So syntax lets you state that here what I intend to create, right? So without having to write the sequence of a program commands to create it, the resource manager template is the example of the declarative syntax. What we can take, we just talked about the resource manager template. That could be one of the uh, declarative syntax we can see. Um, in that file you can define the properties and infrastructure to deploy so all that actually we are going to talk in the resource manager templates or arm templates so what we have so far talked is we talked about the resource manager and the, what's the use of the resource manager how this is actually designed uh, technically in the back end and the terminology that are related to the resource manager and also we talked about the resources resource group and resource provider and also we're going to talk in the upcoming lectures about resource manager templates or arm templates as well as the declarative syntaxes so by this time you might have already understand about you can uh, use the resource manager of for managing your entire infrastructure with the declarative templates rather than your scripts or you can deploy, manage, monitor all of your resources of your solution as a group rather than handling these resources individually, right? Uh, that's where we're going to use the resource group. And you can redeploy your solution throughout the deployment lifecycle and have a confidence on your infrastructure, uh, basically like by using the resource uh, manager templates. Like I have just shown you a virtual machine. I have taken similar virtual machine. I can... Uh, be confidently I can redeploy so that I'll have the similar resources can be deployed consistent state in a consistent state and uh, we can also apply the RBAC uh, when we talk about the RBAC the role based access management we can actually apply the uh, role based access management directly from the AMP of directly uh, from the AMP for your all the re either you can apply this at the resource level or maybe a resource group or at your different layer of your management so that's basically a scope so when you try to understand about the scope uh, which azure resource manager provides is we can say that four level of different scopes that we can 
uh, have within the uh, Azure Resource Manager. The first one would be the management groups. So you can create multiple management group, one for maybe IT, one for maybe a sales team, one for uh, different uh, project altogether. And later point within this management groups, you can have more than one subscriptions even. Let's say one, uh, one of the subscription you just signed up and so that the billing would happen uh, on underneath of this management group and you would know that you know what's happening with this management group and who's gonna responsible for the building so you can actually define that logic so when we when when we look at the higher end uh, from the top level uh, you can easily narrow down uh, where these management groups are going and what are the number of subscriptions you have and each of these subscription will have definitely a different type of resource groups and these resource groups will follow the life cycle of different solutions that you are going to create in within Microsoft Azure like virtual machines or web app or SQL server or automation all that would be part of your resource groups so uh, technically uh, technically this is how it looks like and uh, I hope this entire lecture is useful for you to understand about uh, as your resource manager and we'll catch you in the next lecture uh, i did talk about a different lecture on the management group along with a dedicated demo please make sure that you check out that lecture uh, this is just uh, just to you know, give you an idea about management groups and uh, which is in you know, a part of your uh, again resource manager right so just wanted to give you a the high level overview on the resource manager